What if the world you know today won't be the same in 20 years? An unsettling thought, isn't it? But this isn't some far-fetched dystopian fantasy. It's the reality we're facing as the Earth's climate continues to change. Let's start from the beginning. Climate change, at its core, is the long-term alteration of temperature and typical weather patterns in a place. And while climate has always been in flux, the past century has seen unprecedented changes. This is largely due to human activities, particularly the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas. This leads us to the greenhouse effect. Now, don't get me wrong, some level of the greenhouse effect is natural and necessary. It's what keeps our planet warm enough to support life. But here's the catch. When we burn fossil fuels, we release more carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases trap heat from the sun, causing the earth to warm up. This is what we call global warming. And if we continue down this path, what lies in store? Well, scientists predict more heat waves, longer periods of drought, and more intense storms. Ice caps will continue to melt, leading to rising sea levels and the flooding of coastal cities. And the repercussions won't just be environmental, they'll be social and economic too. Millions could be displaced from their homes and entire industries could collapse. These are not just distant future scenarios. The effects of climate change are already being felt. Each year, the signs become more apparent and harder to ignore. The question is not if these changes will happen, but when and how severe they will be. So let's not beat around the bush. Climate change is real, it's happening now, and it's accelerating. It's an issue that affects us all, no matter where we live or what we do. But it's also an issue that we can do something about. Consider this, if we don't act now, what kind of world are we leaving for future generations? The effects of climate change are not a distant future. They are happening right now. The world, as we know it, is heating up. Over the past century, we've seen a steady increase in global temperatures. The last five years have been the warmest in the recorded history of mankind. A sobering fact that's hard to ignore, isn't it? This rise in temperature isn't just about sweating a little more in the summers or experiencing milder winters. It's about a global shift that's disrupting the delicate balance of our natural ecosystems. It's about heat waves becoming more frequent and intense, baking our lands and cities and putting vulnerable populations at risk. In places like India, the Middle East, and Australia, temperatures have soared to levels that are not just uncomfortable, but deadly. In fact, the World Health Organization estimates that between the years 2030 and 2050, 25,000 more deaths will occur annually due to heat waves alone. But it isn't just about the heat. Droughts are becoming longer and more severe, ravaging farmlands and threatening our food security. Countries in Africa, the Middle East, and even parts of the United States are experiencing some of the worst droughts in history. On the flip side, we're also seeing more heavy rains and floods. Places that used to have predictable rainfall patterns are now facing erratic and extreme weather events. Towns are being washed away, people are losing their homes, and essential infrastructure is being destroyed. And remember, this is happening right now. It's not a hypothetical situation or a tale from a dystopian novel. It's the world we live in, the world we've shaped through our actions and inactions. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves us with a harsh reality, a reality where our actions are directly affecting the planet we call home, a reality where we can no longer ignore the signs and continue with business as usual. This is our reality, and it's only the beginning. Have you ever imagined a world without coastal cities? Let's delve into the issue of rising sea levels, a consequence of climate change that's as real as it gets. Our world is warming up and the polar ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. This isn't some fancy theory, it's a fact. The world's most renowned scientists have confirmed it. Now this melting ice doesn't just vanish into thin air, it ends up in our oceans causing sea levels to rise. You see, when water heats up, it expands. So, not only are we dealing with extra water from the melting ice, but the existing ocean water is also taking up more space. Now, let's think about the implications of this. Picture your favorite coastal city. It could be anywhere, 
the vibrant streets of Venice, the sunny beaches of Miami, or the bustling harbor of Hong Kong. These cities and countless others are at risk of being submerged. It's estimated that by the end of the century, many of these cities might be partially or even entirely underwater. And it's not just cities. Entire countries, particularly low-lying island nations, are in danger too. Places like the Maldives, Kiribati, and Tuvalu could become uninhabitable within this century, displacing hundreds of thousands of people. Now, you might be thinking, that's a long way off. Why should I worry now? Well, it's not just about us. It's about the world we're leaving for future generations. If we don't act now, they might not have a choice. The rising sea levels are a ticking time bomb. It's not just about losing land, it's about losing homes, history, and human lives. We need to acknowledge the severity of this issue and take action. Because remember, it's not a scene from a disaster movie, it's a potential reality. What happens when a species disappears from our planet? This question might sound dramatic, but it's a reality we're facing more and more frequently as the world's climate continues to change. Our planet is a symphony of life, with every species playing its unique role in the grand orchestra of our ecosystems. But climate change has started to silence some of these voices. Imagine going to a concert only to find out the violin section is missing. The music might still be beautiful, but it won't be the same. That's what's happening to our planet. Climate change affects wildlife in a myriad of ways. Changes in temperature and precipitation patterns can alter habitats, making them inhospitable for some species and inviting for others. Rising sea levels can drown coastal habitats and the species that call them home. More frequent and severe weather events can destroy nests, dens and burrows, leaving animals without shelter or food. These changes can be too swift and severe for species to adapt. And the data paints a stark picture. In the past 50 years, scientists estimate that thousands of species have gone extinct due to these climate changes. This includes well-known species like the West African Black Rhinoceros and the Pinta Island Tortoise, also known as Lonesome George, the last of his kind. But it's not just about the loss of individual species. Each species plays a critical role in its ecosystem, from the smallest insect to the largest mammal. When a species goes extinct, it leaves a hole in the ecosystem that can have ripple effects throughout the entire food web. It's like removing a single card from a house of cards. The entire structure can collapse. We are not just losing animals. We are losing the balance of our ecosystems. We are losing the intricate connections and relationships that make our planet so diverse and vibrant. We are losing pieces of the symphony that is life on Earth. And once a species is gone, it's gone forever. There's no getting it back and the music of our planet will never be the same. Climate change is not just an environmental issue, it's a human issue. Let's delve into how climate change significantly impacts us, the humans, from our health to the food we eat, and even the economy we rely on. When we talk about health, climate change is a silent predator. Warmer global temperatures have been linked to an increase in heat-related illnesses and diseases spread by vectors like mosquitoes. Instances of heat stroke and dehydration have been skyrocketing, particularly in heat wave prone regions. Furthermore, diseases like malaria and dengue, once confined to tropical areas, are now spreading to cooler regions as these regions become warmer. This is not a distant threat, it's happening right now, affecting millions of people worldwide. Now, let's consider agriculture. Our food production is under threat. Changing weather patterns affect crop yields, with some areas experiencing severe droughts while others are inundated with floods. These climatic extremes lead to poor harvests, threatening our food security. Not to mention the fact that higher carbon dioxide levels can reduce the nutritional quality of some crops, making our food less nourishing. The economic implications of climate change are also profound. The cost of dealing with extreme weather events, from hurricanes to wildfires, has been steadily increasing. The World Bank estimates that by 2050, the poorest countries could face up to $100 billion in losses every year due to climate change. This doesn't even account for indirect costs like the decrease in worker productivity 
due to heat stress or the strain on public health systems dealing with climate-related diseases. Climate change is a complex issue, a web of interrelated problems that affects every facet of our lives. It's not just about polar bears or melting ice caps. It's about our health, our food, our economy, our future. It's about us. We are at the heart of this issue, both as contributors and as victims. Climate change affects every aspect of our lives. The situation is dire, but not hopeless. We've all heard the grim realities of climate change, but what can we do about it? Let's talk about that. Each one of us has a role to play. Individuals can make a significant impact by adopting more sustainable lifestyles. Simple actions like reducing waste, recycling, or choosing to walk or bike instead of driving can help. Even the food we consume can make a difference. For instance, a plant-based diet emits significantly fewer greenhouse gases than a meat-based one. Communities, too, have their part to play. Community-led initiatives like tree planting drives, local recycling programs, and promoting renewable energy sources can make substantial contributions. A study from the University of Michigan found that community-led sustainability initiatives could reduce local carbon emissions by up to 25%. On a larger scale, governments and corporations have a crucial role. Policies aimed at reducing carbon emissions, investing in renewable energy, and protecting our forests can have a profound impact. For example, Denmark's government-led initiatives have resulted in the country generating over half of its energy from renewable sources. And let's not forget corporations whose operational changes can drastically reduce their carbon footprint. Companies like Google and Apple are now running on 100% renewable energy. The impact of these actions well, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, if we can limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, we could prevent the most catastrophic effects of climate change. And every action we've discussed here today contributes to that goal. Remember, the power to change lies within each of us. Our choices, our actions, they all add up. So let's make them count. We have the capacity to turn the tide on climate change, to write a different future for our planet. Every action counts, and together we can make a difference. Climate change is the greatest challenge of our time. We've journeyed through the unsettling questions and harsh realities. We've seen the rising sea levels and the loss of biodiversity that leaves our ecosystems teetering on the brink of collapse. We've seen the human impact, the lives and livelihoods that climate change has already claimed and the many more it threatens. But we've also seen the power of change, the potential we have to turn the tide, to lessen the blow and adapt to what's to come. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but swallow it, we must. The urgency of the situation cannot be overstated. Every day, every decision counts. This is not a drill. This is not a hypothetical scenario. This is it, the greatest challenge of our time, and it's up to us, every single one of us, to face it head on. The question is, are we ready to rise to the challenge?